Hi, I'm Dennis Corcoran, director of the Hingham Public Library, and you're watching Getting to Know Your Library on HCAM TV. <music> Today we're going to give you a little tour of the inner workings of the Hingham Public Library. You'll get to meet the staff, you'll get to learn about our services, and you'll get to see some of the fine features of the library. Well, we should probably take a minute to talk about the, the library's mission. Um, the library's mission, as we've expressly stated, is to provide for the educational, cultural, and informational needs of the community. That's a pretty broad territory to sort of work. But in, in many ways, it, uh, it, it breaks down into some things that I think people really find quite, quite simple and intelligible. The, uh, one of the big issues for us that comes out of that is to uh, work with children on pre-literacy issues. Uh, we spend a great deal of time uh, through our children's department uh, doing lots of programs and activities, story hours and such, craft programs, and other, other types of uh, activities that help uh, young children build language skills which prepare them for the more, more formal school setting. Um, other things we do, we also focus on um, lifelong learning activities for our, uh, our, our public. Um, in the last couple of years we have been focusing on the age 55 and over population um, and we've had dramatic success with that. Um, we've been co-partnering with a group that's based at the University of Massachusetts, Boston, called the OLLI program, O-L-L-I, which is the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. Um, and their mission is to provide educational opportunities for uh, seniors. And um, it's college level work uh, without the tests and the grades, so it's a very comfortable fit. So we've been doing a lot of classes here at the library, both with an in-person instructor and we've been doing video conferencing over the internet, which is interactive. So we're um, uh, running a class out of our Witten meeting room that might be originating in Boston um, on any number of, of topics, uh, courses, in, in fact, some of them are where they run multiple weeks. and. Um, What's happening is that our, our attendees in the Witten Room are actually able to interact with the audience in Boston and the instructor, and the instructor in Boston can see our uh, participants in Hingham and interact with them in real time. Um, when we have a, a number of classes with an instructor in the room, um, it's, uh, it could be technically broadcast to other locations. Um, we do a number of these programs that are called brown bags, which are simple lunchtime events, uh, you know, one-time kind of event where a speaker will come in and uh, talk on a topic of, of history or sociology or economics. Uh, any number of, of uh, topics might be presented. And Hingham residents are invited to attend those brown bags for free. There's no need for the OLLI membership, which you do need for uh, attending the courses, but the membership is very inexpensive and well worthwhile. Um, so our focus there has been on, on lifelong learning. Um, we also try to provide for the cultural needs of the community. Obviously the, the art galleries are a big piece of that, but we do lots of programming involving authors, um, some of them are discussion groups. Um, we have a discussion group coming up on some Middle East issues, which will be interesting. And we also do uh, musical programs. The, uh, our uh, partnership with the Boston Classical Guitar Society goes back almost 15 years. And um, we bring in some of the most wonderful musicians that you, you can imagine. Uh, these are highly trained musicians that uh, really appreciate the Hingham performance venue. Uh, it gives them a chance to uh, appear before a very appreciative audience that we have built up over the years. 
Um, so that's another, another example of, of the, the cultural programming. Um, informational programming that we do involves uh, presenting information on timely topics that may be of interest for daily living. And those occur from, from time to time as well. circulation department in the library is where we handle most of the transactions of the books. The books coming and going, when people place items on hold, they come here to pick them up. Um, a lot of people, when they're new to the library, stop here first to get their library card, um, find out a little bit of the library, and, and you know, figure out what we have to offer. We're part of a, a network, the Old Colony Library Network, and it's a consortium of about 28 libraries. Um, out of that, we actually circulate um, over 416,000 items last fiscal year um, that we just checked out to patrons who've come into the library. Um, we've also um, borrowed and loaned between the libraries over 100,000 items. Um, and a lot of those items end up on our hold shelves that people put on hold. They get sent here from another library and they can come and pick it up. We, um, we have a large number of patrons who use the system. They can go online at home anytime during the day or night, place things on holds. We'll go get them off the shelf or have them sent from another library. We have about over 3,000 holds per month that are filled that people come and pick up. Um, and, you know, on a monthly basis, we check out, just check out, um, usually over 30,000 items. Um, so it's a, quite a volume we do here, but we like to keep things moving and keep people happy. Um, at our particular library here, we have over 14,000 registered borrowers. And last year alone, we had um, about 266,000 visits to the library. So that's how many people actually came through our doors for the last year. Um, so it's a quite a busy library. We do a lot here. I like to think of the circulation department as the heart of the library where, you know, if one stops, things happen and then they go out to the rest of the library. Some other things we offer are individual study rooms. So um, to the left of our main desk, we have three individual study rooms, which are glass enclosed rooms, um, seat, you know, up to two or three people at a time. And they're very popular. People use them. Um, we have Wi-Fi throughout the building, but they get Wi-Fi there. They also have plug-ins if they want to bring their laptops and um, sometimes they just need a place to go and shut a door and do some quiet study. So the study rooms are ideal for that as well. Um, in the circulation area, besides a large volume of books throughout the entire library that we check in and out, we also have magazines and newspapers. We have a, a magazine and newspaper room um, that's very popular for sitting and just flipping through a magazine looking at today's newspaper. Um, we have a, a good selection as well as now we have downloadable magazines as well which is a new product we offer through um, the OCLN website and our home uh, website hinghamlibrary.org. We have a magnifier for people who have vision problems that's actually located um, behind this area in our large print magazine room. And for people who have vision problems such as macular degeneration, they can actually use this magnifier to you know, make print visible. Um, it changes the size, it can change the color. Um, it's helpful for people who you know, need to read and are having a, a problem with that at home. Our rental books circulate for a week at a time and patrons can just pay a dollar per week. And what these are are the newest, hottest releases. So some of these books have a holds list. People maybe don't want to you know, wait for it. They might go to the bookstore and buy it. So instead they could come see one of the most popular books here and just take it out for a dollar for the week. Members of the community can put up um, you know, little boards about uh, events going on so that when patrons come in they can see this and see what's what's happening in the community. You know, thematically, every month, um, two staff members, Carol Lipset and Marcia Sinclair, work on um, putting up a new book display. Um, this particular month is Think Warm, and they pick out, pick out books thematically and always do a great display, so when patrons come in, they can see something different, something, you know, fun for the month. So if you'd like a library card and you're either new to Hingham or new to the library, what you do is you just come right to the main desk um, we would ask you for um, a driver's license or other photo ID showing your current address. And if you don't have that, we'd al also ask you for a photo ID of some sort with something showing your current address, like a piece of mail, utility bill, checkbook. 
Once you have something um, with your name and address on it, we would enter it into our computer system. It just takes two minutes to type that information in, your contact information and phone number. Once you do that, we hand you your new library card and you're good to use it at this library as well as all other libraries in the OCLN network. Well, as uh, most of us know, libraries are going through a very dramatic uh, transition. Um, the world, society has become increasingly digital and so has the library. The library um, is also very committed to the traditional print services that we've offered, you know, for forever. Um, but we're also moving into another world which is digital delivery of books and magazines and uh, if you check our website again a good link to finding some of these resources we have uh, a great deal of information about ebooks and ebooks you can download for free uh, from the library we've introduced a new and wonderful service on uh, magazines that uh, allow you to have a 24 7 access to um, full magazines uh, on the web, a service called Zinio. Uh, so please take a, a look at that when you get a chance. We just introduced that. Um, we are looking to introduce over the coming year um, more materials on video and music. Uh, so there'll be downloadable video and music. We also uh, have downloadable audiobooks, which are extremely popular with our, our users as well as the CD versions of those books. Um, so digital, our, our world has become increasingly digital here at the library. Uh, our databases which are available to uh, researchers 24-7 are, are growing. Uh, everything from investment service information to comprehensive periodical databases. And these are a great supplement to what people find on the web when they're doing their research because all of these publications are uh, carefully edited and vetted uh, for reliable information. So I hope that as you do your school project or research whatever you're doing for your family and friends that you take a look at what these resources are on the library's, data, library's um, website I should say. We have 17 internet computers available for public use that are in the reference section of the library on the second floor. Uh, come in and use them and uh, there's no fee, there's no sign up. It's a first come situation. Hi, I'm Peter Thornell, a member of the reference department here at the library. Um, one of the fastest growing collections here at the library is the ebooks or downloadable book collection. Um, ebooks and audiobooks that can be downloaded. Um, we just overhauled the whole system, so there's a brand new um, software that, that helps the process that's even easier than it was before, very intuitive. Um, we have about 5,800 ebook titles that can be per, uh, downloaded by patrons right now, and about 2,000 audiobooks, and that number is growing every week as we add more and more titles and people really love the service. Uh, they work on all different devices from Kindles to iPads, Nooks, your phones, computers, um, lots of kids books and all different genres and styles of books so it's a, it's a great collection that's growing all the time. When you're starting out with ebooks most of the devices work pretty much on their own. Some of them you have to download some software from the website. Um, we help people here at the reference desk all the time during the week with, with this process. Um, you just do it through the website. We have little um, handouts here actually that you can come in and pick up as one for every different device you can use. Um, the books go out like any other library book so if we have you know one copy of a title one person can have it at a time and uh, you get it for two weeks and then it just goes away to um, the next patron in line. Another feature we have at the library, which is brand new, which people really love, is um, digital magazines you can download to your devices, your computers, your phones. Um, the program is called Zinio, Z-I-N-I-O, and you can find, about it, find out about it on our website, or you can come in and we have handouts here about it too. Um, basically, it's just a way for you to get a subscription to any of these magazines um, online, everything from 
Esquire and, and Newsweek to all kinds of crafting magazines and hobby magazines. Um, and it's a great feature because a lot of libraries have had to cut back on some of their print subscriptions, you know, in-house magazines you can take home and read. Um, so this is a great way to be able to uh, just to get all these magazines really quickly, really easily. Um, and a lot of them are great because of the digital uh, process. They're really clean, crisp images. You can blow up the images or blow up the text to see it even easier. Um, so we just got this, I think it just went live in February. Um, so it's very, very popular already. A lot of people are using it. And it's uh, another great feature that we offer here. We also have a really great music collection here at the library. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be the person that, that buys and cares for the music collection here. Um, we've got over 10,000 CDs from all different genres of music. Um, we have the newest releases, again, in every genre, all kinds of pop music and classical music and jazz and world and soundtracks. Um, they're in the audio-visual department with the, with the movies and the, the uh, audio books. Um, there's just great stuff. They go out uh, for two weeks at a time, most of them, and it's one of the, one of the most popular collections in the library. The whole AV department. CDs, the movies, the audiobooks um, are just immensely popular, which is which is wonderful. Um, we have, as we've mentioned, downloadable ebooks and audiobooks and everything else. And people ask a lot about downloadable music and, and movies in the future too. Um, that's something that we can't do now um, because of the way uh, the rights management for CDs and DVDs. It's difficult to download one copy and then let you know 10, 20 limitless people use it. Um, but I know in the future uh, that will be uh, a way that I will, will buy physical CDs and will also start buying some, some CDs that you probably will be streaming access to instead of downloading it onto your computer. You could listen to it you know, at the moment. Um, that's still probably a few years away, um, but it's definitely somewhere that the collection as a whole is going. One of the best things we get to do here at the Reference Desk is to help patrons use what we as a library offer. So if anyone has any questions or issues about ebooks or the computers we have here or downloading services or using Zinnia, using the website, anything, they can contact the reference desk. You can come in in person, which is what we like the best, or you can call, um, send us an email. And any one of the three of us, um, Kathy Leahy, Ann Dalton, and myself, um, are more than happy to help you figure out how to use all these things so you can really get the most out of what the library has to offer. So anything you need to know about our library, the services that we have in-house and events that we have, or all of our online services, you can find at our website. Um, and on the website, everything's listed pretty cleanly. Up top, we have a link for my account. You can see what you have checked out or what holds you're waiting for. Um, you can see our hours. You can see uh, museum passes. You can book museum passes right online. Um, there's a calendar of events over here. You can just see what's happening any day um, today, a month or two ahead. Um, all the different news events that are coming up, new concerts, new, new changes to the library, new children's events are listed right in the middle. And then on the right-hand side, we have all the different um, online features that we have. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the downloadable audio and e-books, um, the Zinio magazines, um, the Mango um, online language learning for Hingham residents. Um, the blogs, uh, right now the active blog is uh, my, excuse me, mu music blog. Um, once a week on every Wednesday morning there's a, a blog goes out about uh, a new addition to the CD collection. So it's just a way to keep updated on what's new in music. Um, book letters, uh, a, a link for um, readers advisory work. Or, you know, trying to find a new good book to read. You know, you've read a great book, want to read something like it. You can go on book letters and get all kinds of other lists of great books you might be interested in. Um, obviously the buttons for, for um, Facebook and Twitter feeds that we have. Um, you can sign up on the website for all kinds of different um, events and notices whenever we add a new program or concert for adults or for children. You can, you can specify which ones you want. Um, and uh, links to the town, obviously the whole town site. And uh, anything you need really about us. Um, how to use whatever we have, the downloadable, uh, the uh, databases um, for articles and journal articles and consumer reports, which we have online now, um, you can access here too. So there's a lot of good stuff on the website.
We recently added um, a great thing to our reference collection. We've always had uh, Hingham, Lab Hingham High School yearbooks going back to the 30s. Um, but we recently had them digitized by the Boston Public Library, so you can now go onto the website and view the yearbooks. Um, if you go to the main page at the moment, and let me scroll down to Hingham High School yearbooks, there's a link in here to view all the yearbooks. Um, there's a couple books that we didn't have, 64 and 67 we didn't have, but all the other ones are available um, chronologically from the most recent first going backwards. And you can just click on any of these and um, page through uh, all the yearbooks, um, which is which is great because the yearbooks physically have gotten you know we can't buy another one if, if if it tears apart or breaks we can't replace it so it's great to be able to have it in the digital formats so that anybody can use them and and, uh, and you know make copies and see pictures and a lot of people lose their yearbooks and they love to be able to come back and see these so um, this is a great new feature that um, being you know a very digital library and really being interested in, in all these processes. Um, it's a great, great feature for us. Here we are in the art gallery lobby area of the library. Uh, this is one of my favorite areas in the building because it's such a warm and inviting space where you're drawn into some of the fantastic artwork that we're able to show from artists who are from all over the South Shore, Boston area, and we've even had an artist who came all the way from Ontario, Canada to show her work here. So we're pleased with the, the great success of both our galleries, the Dolphin Gallery and the Clemens Gallery, which is our smaller gallery. Um, we, our shows for the Dolphin Gallery are, are planned out through 2014. We're just beginning to accept applications for 2015. Uh, the smaller gallery, the Clemens, uh, is planned out approximately a year. Um, the artists who might be viewing the show would be, uh, and are interested in perhaps exhibiting here can uh, make an application to us by getting the application forms from our website and submitting them to the library. Um, it takes us probably about 30 days to process an application and make a decision about a show. So um, I hope you spend time looking at these fantastic exhibits as you come in. It's a great conversation maker with your friends and neighbors. Everybody gets to be an art critic when they come to the Hingham Public Library, but it's a wonderful thing that builds a sense of community. We have a program with Museum Passes where we offer passes to about a dozen local museums, mostly in Boston, Museum of Science, Museum of Fine Arts, Boston Children's Museum are just a couple, we also offer the Plymouth Plantation. Uh, you can reserve any of these museum passes on our website for Hingham residents with a Hingham library card for a small fee. It's usually $2 per pass. And come in and pick them up, and you can head off to the museums. I am the current head of the audiovisual services for the library. I've been a proud employee of the library since February 7th, 1972. So in those 41 years, I've seen a great many technology changes. I've been asked to speak to you about the current types of items that we have, the services to provide to you from this department. Right now, we have uh, collections of audiobooks, music, movies, and art prints. The audiobook collection uh, contains a vast variety of titles, both nonfiction and fiction. They are found in the compact disc and MP3 formats, and we also have the ebooks available through the downloads through the network. We uh, also have handwritten guides to help uh, patrons who are not familiar with how to download, and we provide assistance with people who would like some help in how to do that. The music collection is all on the compact disc format. We have everything from pop and rock music to classical music, jazz, world, and everything in between. For the movies, those come on the DVD format. We have the movies themselves arranged by the genre of the movie. So if you come in the library, you really don't know what it is you want to watch. Uh, but you'd like to see a good drama, a good comedy, a good mystery, you would go to the drama section, the comedy section, the mystery section. We also have a great 
collection of foreign films as well as documentaries. In the documentaries, you're going to find such items as history, biography, travel, music performances, uh, stage productions. The other collection that we have for loan are the art prints. Those were begun in 1973 by a group called the Friends of the Hingham Public Library. They were managed by a Hingham employee named Betsy Robinson, and they are for borrow uh, on, for six weeks on your library card. That group thought uh, back when they started it that it would be uh, quite an opportunity for people to hang original art in their home, and if they enjoyed it enough that they might purchase those prints as well. Today's collection is only for borrow. However, if you come in the main entrance of the library, you will also see two galleries that provide displays on a continual basis, and oftentimes those items are available for purchase if you're interested. The uh, other service that we provide here in the audiovisual department is a series called the Independent Movie Night. That happens on the third Wednesday every month. It's a free event. It happens between the hours of 7 and 9 in the evening. If you come in the main entrance of the library, you'll just turn to the right to the Witten Room, and that's where we hold the movies. What you have to remember is we're a public site, and as a public site, we have to be public performance compliant. So once we know what film we are able to show, you can either call the library, 781-741-1405, you can pick up a flyer if you're in the library once we have those available and you can also go to the website hinghamlibrary.org and once it's been chosen you will see it advertised as well as a complete listing of movies that have been shown in the past. One of the things that we pride ourselves on is having a, a very responsive and comprehensive website for the library. That website is hinghamlibrary.org and it's really your entry point for both the physical and digital resources of the library um, from basic information about hours and services and who to contact uh, lots of information about uh, the activities that are going on in the library there's a very full featured and robust calendar that tells you what's happening in the meeting rooms and not all those events are library sponsored events Lots of community events uh, take place in the library and uh, just for your viewers uh, interest that if they have an organization that is looking to utilize a meeting room they can contact the reference department and the meeting rooms are ma made available free to community groups. Um, the website also has um, many features where you can sign up for newsletters if you're interested in a particular aspect of the library. Uh, there are some things that also help provide um, reader guidance if you're looking for something that um, would help you pick out your next book that you want to read. Lots of information about that on the site as well. Um, so it's a pretty comprehensive place to start if you want to find something out about the library or if you're looking for something to do. Uh, we have thousands of meetings a year here at the, at the library. Uh, and we would welcome you to attend those meetings that are, that are appropriate uh, for your information or organization. Our bookstore is open every day from 10 to 4, uh, staffed completely by volunteers. And um, most of the books range from 50 cents to a dollar. We have a couple of special books that um, Joan Allen and Adrian and earn a lot of run it. It's a lot of work, but they make a lot of money for the, um, the library. So all of these books come in completely donated from Hingham residents. We bring in um, close to $10,000 a year in this bookstore activity. So it's a great fundraiser for us. And it's a very enjoyable place to work because everybody is so nice. And we have um, a nice party for the volunteers every year in May that they run here at the library. And this is a beautiful library. It's a nice library, it really is. Hingham is a nice town to live in. They have a lot of you know, special things. To
Yeah, we'll do a library orientation tour for actually for anybody that wants one. I could give you one if you're ever interested. Um, but mostly we do it for our scout troops, preschools, things like that, and they'll bring their group in and we'll do a little tour of the children's area. Sometimes the wider library, sometimes I take the kids up to technical services and show them where the books are ordered and processed and everything like that, depending on how old they are. Um, but usually we give them a tour of the children's department, the areas that they'd be using. Um, and we usually follow it up with a scavenger hunt or a similar activity, something to kind of um, let them practice the, the things that we've showed them, let them kind of um, put those skills to use. So every day, we have story time just about every day here. We do a different age every day of the week, ranging from newborn infants um, up about through age eight, depending on the time of day. So we're pretty busy with that in the mornings. Um, and then after school, it's a really busy library. We have a ton of kids from all the different schools in town, um, the private schools and the public schools. And they come in to do their homework with their parents or on their own, depending how old they are. Um, so we're really busy in the afternoon helping kids with research and to find books. And we're always happy to make book suggestions. That's one of our favorite things. So we like when that happens a lot during the day. Um, but we'll help with anything. And um, so um, it was nice when they renovated the library. The children's department got a whole wing, which really enabled us to spread out the groups, which is nice so that the small babies and toddlers can be running around and making noise. And it doesn't necessarily you know, bother the high schoolers that are trying to actually study and stuff like that. So we basically have four rooms in our department now. One is um, infants through preschool and the early readers. So people are in there up until about first grade. Um, so it's really more of like the small family room. We have some toys in there and all the picture books are in there and the, the books, the board books for babies. Um, and then we have our elementary room, which is where most of our nonfiction is for projects um, and all the fiction for the kids in, in the elementary grades. and. Um, and we have in that room also some like educational computers with kids' games on them and things like that, magazines. We have a new-ish, new fairly large collection of graphic novels, which is, which is really nice. The kids are excited about that now, graphic novels. I don't know if you know. They're um, like the comic book form of a, of a book. And then we have our teen area, our, our young adult space, um, which actually is going to be renovated shortly. Um, and it won't look too different. Um, we're moving some of the bookshelves around, but the big thing really is that we're going to have more space up here for people to sit. Um, right now we run out of seats pretty much every day, and on a busy day there's totally nothing. People are on the floor, they've got their papers spread out. Um, so we wanted to do some kind of renovation that would make better use of the space. Um, so that's so we're going to move some bookshelves around, and we're adding in big couches under the windows and some extra tables and some small study rooms for people that want to work quietly um, with a, you know, a up here or, um, or even like a tutor or something like that. Um, and then we're going to have a nice new book display and some bar style seating up front. Um, so basically it, it will look a lot different but mostly because there'll be so much more seating. We have, I think we, when we counted, we have 15 seats in here right now and this kind of repurpose remodel is going to give us about 40 seats. So it's really going to like quadruple the amount of kids that can sit up here, which is going to be great because it is packed after school and it'll be nice to have space for everybody. We have books on tape, CDs, movies, video games, toys, um, other things I think that are not coming to mind right now, but a lot of stuff and it's all in that room and it's split basically the same way that the rooms are, preschool, elementary school, middle school, high school. Um, so we have all the stuff in one room, but it's kind of arranged in sections. So you can go, you know, wherever your family is at. You can take your kids to the right section and kind of find the materials for you. So the summer reading program, it's. We have it every year. We start planning for it in January. It's huge. We have usually about 700 kids that participate. And basically how it works, it's kind of up to the parents to determine how much they want their kids to read. Every kid is different, and every kid has, you know, is on a different level and different expectations and all of that. So the parents sit down with the kids and do, you know, create a guideline. And so our part, the kids come in every week. They get a little sticker. We have a little card where we track their reading. They get a sticker. They get to pick out a prize. Um, they pick out new books. So that's the reading part. The incentive is really just to keep kids reading at their own level and their own pace throughout the summer. Um, 
all the studies show it's important that kids keep reading in the summer or when they go back to school in the fall they're kind of you know a little bit behind it's good to keep them going so it's nice for us to be able to provide maybe a little bit of an incentive um, for kids and parents to kind of keep doing that and keep them coming to the library in the summer um, and then we have programs. We have two to three a day in the summer for every, every age kid. We have stuff for babies. We have stuff for middle schoolers. Um, we have live animal shows come in and magicians. And we have story times. We have craft things. We usually do some yoga. Um, I'm trying to think what else. We usually, the, yeah, we show movies, lots of movies. The middle schoolers um, get to do crafts that are a little more complicated and things like that. Um, yeah, we have music programs. We have so much stuff in the summer, I can't even think at all. By the time the summer is done, we've done like 50 programs over the course of six weeks. It's crazy. We usually have thousands and thousands of people at our programs in the summer. It's, it's great. It's very busy, but it's so much fun. Um, and the kids really seem to like it. They ask all year for the things they get in the summer, like the toys and the candy and things that we only give them in July. So we invite the kids, usually in the last couple months of the school year, to create any kind of piece of art that they want to create. And then um, the winners are judged, and the three top choices, usually from an, a range of ages, um, get to go on all of our summer brochures and our summer program materials, um, which is really neat. It's nice for us, I think, to have a, a personal local touch on all of our materials that we put out instead of using the stock clip art. Um, it's fun to have things done locally by kids, and, um, and it's fun for the kids, I think, the ones that really like to draw. There's not a lot of opportunities necessarily to have your work out there in public. And um, there are some really, really talented kids in Hingham. We've seen some incredible stuff come through. So I have high hopes for those kids. We've developed a relationship with the Eagle Scouts in town through select woman Irma Lauder. And through her, we have had a couple of Eagle Scout projects completed at the library recently. Um, the most current project is out in our lobby. It is a flag repository done by Eagle Scout Leif Thurston. And it is a, um, a place to deposit your old, damaged, used flags that uh, should not be disposed of at the dump. And this is the proper way to dispose of them. Leaf was featured on the front page of the Hingham Journal recently. I think the issue was February 28th. Hi, um, my name is Ann Dalton, and I am a reference librarian at the Hingham Public Library. Uh, one of the functions of the reference librarians is to uh, be involved with the collection, the historical collection. And uh, Hingham is a town that is very rich with history. It's one of the original 12, first 12 towns to be settled. And um, we are fortunate to have documents and other materials relevant to that time period and all the way through Hingham's history. One of the earliest documents that we have is the uh, recording of land grants to the early settlers in Hingham by Daniel Cushing, who was uh, a town clerk in the mid-1850s. Um, so uh, here's a, a page or two from the original book. Um, you can see that it's really in quite good condition. We've taken care with it to uh, try to preserve it as best we can. Nowadays in Hingham, you can buy a house for a lot of money. And in those days, they gave land away to the, the settlers, and they were all given a fair allotment of, of land. So, in fact, they usually had more than one um, piece of land because there was also land for uh, salt hay um, growing to, uh, to use. Hingham was particularly known for uh, leather making, uh, cordage, for um, shoe making and also for uh, coopering. Uh, Hingham's known as the bucket town and um, uh, one of the industries was making buckets, um, which was actually a pretty important industry at the time. Um, this book is an account book from uh, a woodenware um, business that uh, was in, um, it's called the French and Beale company and they were involved in woodenware industry. 
Um, and again, this is something that is still in very good condition, but in order to keep it that way, um, we have to limit use. But it's on um, microfilm, and it, it gives you some clue about what was involved in that, um, that industry at that time. Um, another, we just recently had the glass slides digitized, um, and glass slides were uh, the photographic process that was used in the um, 1800s um, after the daguerreotype, daguerreotype. So um, this is what they look like. They come in various sizes, um, but even as a negative, you can get a pretty good image but with it being digitized, we get a, a positive image, and uh, it's much clearer, and um, you get a really nice picture of the, the images came out very well um, through the, by, after they were scanned. The nice thing about the glass slides is it gives you uh, a, a visual picture of what Hingham was like in the in that time period of the late 1800s and early 1900s. Going back to the 1600s, one of an, an important document and a, uh, important and interesting document is um, a recording of the land uh, plots for the, some of the early settlers, and we have the original, but because um, it's in fragile condition. It's over 300 years old. It's not accessible, but we do ha also have a copy of it on microfilm. And a lot of the early materials that we have are available on microfilm because of the fragile condition. Uh, the, the historical collection is mainly housed in two rooms in the reference area. The first room, which is the room we're in here, uh, is mainly uh, books. And most of them pertain to Hingham's history, or history of the region, or um, we have some family genealogies. Hingham has some names that go back to the 1600s, like Tower, Beale, Cushing, Fearing, um, Hersey, names that people who live here are familiar with because there are street na streets named after these people, and, and the history is full of uh, references to family members. The site where, where the library is now um, used to be where the agricultural and horticultural hall was located. And so we have a lot of papers that um, were given to us um, that pertain to, to that. And it, that um, building and institution was a very important part of Hingham's social life as well as a, a cultural center at the time. The library, you may not know, was founded privately by a great gift from an early Hingham philanthropist, Albert Fearing, who, for whom Fearing Road is mentioned, is, is named. Albert Fearing created the library in 1868 with a gift because he believed that the town needed to have books in order to supplement its learning and its culture. And that gift really has been followed by many others over the years. Fearing himself built the library, he paid to, have it, to hire the first librarian, he insured it so that when it burned down in 1869 it could be rebuilt. And so really we could almost call it the Fearing Public Library, that's what it was for. One of the brilliant things that Albert Fearing did was to establish a, uh, a to suggest the library create a corporation. The town does not buy the books for the library. The books are bought from donations and bookstore revenue and overdue fines. That's all purchased by money that's retained by the, by the library. So in, in 1872, the legislator created the library as a corporation, and we have this independence. Uh, most people don't necessarily realize that the library has a sort of hybrid structure. It's a town department, but we have this board which is composed of citizens of the town, appointed by the selectmen and by the moderator, uh, along with a permanent corporation of, of tr trustees who have been elected to the corporation. And their responsibility is to take care of the library, advance its interests, and always to be alert to what the people of the town need and what they want. 
Hingham is unique in that the Board of Trustees has a separate corporation, and the corporation is able to retain the revenue that comes in the door from uh, overdue fines, lost books, bookstore revenue, as well as any fundraising that we do. And that's the money that is, in turn, used to purchase the books that are on the shelves in the library. You know the library has books, but it has so many other things. We have concerts, we have, uh, we have classes through the Ali Lifelong Learning Center. We have art exhibits, including this great Frank Benson painting of ducks. Uh, but we have continuing art exhibits in the, in, in the uh, lobby, which you could see. We also have a great bookstore, a little bookstore where you can buy books. So there are so many things going on. And our job as trustees is to be always thinking about the future of the library, ex expanding its offerings as much as possible, thinking about uh, asking the support of the town. And we're so glad that when you come, we, we, we want you to not only enjoy the library, use the library, but let us know how we can do a better job meeting your needs. Thank mm -hmm. you.